So, I want to tell you about a problem that has been with me for quite some time. Actually, as a student, I noticed a strange discrepancy, and not just I did, but probably other people did as well, which is the treatment of time in quantum mechanics. You sometimes read very weird statements about that, like time is just a parameter, and that's, that, that's supposed to be an excuse for something. So, especially for, for an excuse for the complete lack of treatment of time measurements in textbooks. So, the, the discrepancy I mean is, so very little, no, from textbooks. So, if you, if you look at your favorite books, chances are you won't find anything about how to measure arrival time. On the other hand, it's very common type of measurement in the lab. So actually when you have some detectors by which you detect your particles, then always, all, well, always actually, it's part of the story when the detector clicks. So that is answering the question, when does the detector click? That's part of the measurement, more often than not. Right? So, so in, the, in the lab, you have these detectors, they have a click time. And of course, this whole thing being a quantum mechanical measurement that produces a distribution of click times. And then you go to your theory books, and there is this general claim that uh, whatever can be measured in a lab is described by a quantum mechanical observable. Right? So some pretty well understood kind of mathematical object. And well, you say then maybe not the other way around. So if you come up with just any old a mission operator, nobody knows how to measure that. So that, that's, in that direction, it's not so clear. But certainly, if you can measure it, and it's measured all the time, then there should be something in the books telling you how to do that. I mean, what kind of observable should I write down for that? So this is the basic discrepancy I was, um, I, I was talking about. And so in the early 80s, I had a couple of papers on this, and I've worked on it over, year, over the years, on and off. So certainly has been is an old interest of mine. So one stopper to this whole thing, and maybe the, the reason why people say time is not an observable, is um, so Pauli's footnote. In the famous Handbook article, he explains why time cannot be an observable. Now, if uh, so, for Pauli, an observable is just the same as a self-adjoint operator. So, whatever is going to be the time should be a self-adjoint operator t, right? So then, the relation between time and energy should be just a commutator, like this. That is I H bar the identity. And from that, you would get like Heisenberg type uh, uncertainty relations. And actually, you mentioned uh, time energy uncertainty as being just completely analogous to uh, position momentum. So, but if that is the case, we can look at the following. We take the unitary group that is uh, generated by the, this time operator. So, this is a group of unitary operators with a parameter e. And we apply that to the Hamiltonian in much the same way as we usually apply the Hamiltonian to other observables. So then what we get is from this relation that, that will give us a differential equation to show that this is equal to h minus e times the identity. So now if, if we have any eigenvalue of h, then also every shifted Value has to be an eigenvalue because that is in the same, that's a unitarily the same operator, or any point in the spectrum already immediately spreads to the whole line. 
right? So, so this contradicts what we usually have, that uh, h is positive or larger than some constant times a ground state energy, right? So if, if the Hamiltonian has a ground state energy, which most of them definitely have, uh, the physical ones, then this is not possible. So that's Pauli's argument. Um, so so if, if this is your notion of observable, you're doomed. You won't find a time observable, and that may very well be the reason why you don't find it in the textbooks. Okay, so let's see how to go work around that.